Welcome to anyone watching, it's Craig at mysimpit.co.uk and welcome to part 23 of the front dash build. In this video we're going to look at the design of the standby attitude indicator. We'll consider the scope of that build in terms of which parts we'll replicate, some of the initial tests undertaken and then we'll have a very close look at the final CAD CAM design. Let's buckle up. The approach I took in building this panel was first to be clear in my mind the scope of what I was looking to build in terms of which parts of this panel am I looking to replicate. So there were four key parts. The first was the warning flag. The second was what is the standby ADI's equivalent of the sphere that you get in the, the main core ADI of the aircraft. This I've referred to as an attitude cylinder, or sometimes referred to as a tape wheel. The third is the miniature aircraft marker, that it would replicate that from the point of view that it could be adjusted and, and move. And then also to replicate and implement the cage knob. From the outset, it was clear that there was always going to be two main challenges with this instrument. The first is that the attitude cylinder is one that rotates on one axis for roll but also another for pitch so this goes a step further and beyond the last panel I did the altimeter because I've got the one axis operating within another axis. The second concern is when considering the amount of components and moving parts that there will be within this panel and the space that would therefore require but yet at the same time, the standby attitude indicator occupies such a small part of the front dash. So that would be the challenge of being able to condense everything within that design to fit into that very tight space. The approach I therefore took was to put all of my initial focus on the attitude cylinder to get that to work. And then also to get the other parts around that in place, the, flag, the warning flag the aircraft marker and the cage knob and then from that point I could just scale those parts as needed to, to make it fit to the front dash frame. What we can see here are some very early tests that I ran where I've designed and 3D printed the attitude cylinder that's attached to an X27 style stepper and that in turn is attached to a 3D printed bracket that I then attached to the shaft of an EMA 8. Whereas the roll axis of this instrument is 360 degrees, the pitch isn't and therefore an X27 style stepper is absolutely fine for this. A good learning at this stage was to adjust and control the torque of the NEMA 8 because previously I've never driven anything greater than just a pointer. But in this case, an EMA 8 is moving all of those 3D printed parts and the other stepper motor, so it needs a greater amount of torque, otherwise you'll see those attachments slip. We can see that where there's a moderate roll of the aircraft, and therefore the axis isn't moving too quickly, it manages to hold on to those 3D printed parts just fine. But if we now do a much greater rate of roll, we can observe the effect that that has. And we'll just do that again. And that is the effect of the lack of torque. The solution is very straightforward. It just involves adjusting the potentiometer on the easy driver board. And that increases the current pass through to the stepper. And you're able to determine exactly how much current is drawn by using a multimeter to take a voltage measurement uh, from that easy driver board. We can see here a revision to that design uh, whereby the stepper motor itself for the pitch axis is incorporated inside of the attitude cylinder. 
And this was just one of a, a number of revisions made based on lots of other tests, which allowed me to reach a point where I could put together a final design, a blueprint to work to, to construct it. So we're at a point now where from the learnings gained, the design can be put together um, using a CAD CAM program. I use a mix of Cut 2D and Fusion 360, often designing some initial parts in Cut 2D and then moving them across into Fusion where you can do a little bit, well, a lot more in the, the 3D world. So let's just take a close look. Uh, initially, there are including some of the spaces, 40 key parts that make this up. And the easiest way to talk through the design is really to start with the NEMA 8, which will sit right at the, the heart of this. So we've got a NEMA 8, and that itself needs to be held in place by this bracket. Um, there is a bit of a, what would look like an odd, um, design around the edges but a little bit more explanation can be given on that in a moment now some of the other bits that I'll be putting in place is there'll be a rigid flange added to the shaft of the front of the stepper and that will have added to that a 3D printed a 3D printed bracket That bracket in turn has the X27 style stepper suspended in place. And then onto that stepper motor, we have this tape wheel that we've designed. And there's been quite a few variations to this to reach this point where I'm comfortable it will overcome some of the, the challenges that I've had in the, the testing phase. Now, there's a few other considerations of this. I suppose the next thing to be thinking about is there'll be a flange at the rear. And there'll be an extension to that, which is to assist the zero detection. There'll be a trigger arm, again, 3D printed and secured tightly in place on there, but adjustable if needed. And this will be referred to this bracket as an optical holder and there's the optical sensor so you can see the optical sensor held in place via this overall bracket and there's a trigger to it we can drop in place some of the spaces that will be needed to start to hold all of this design together we've then got a another rigid flange added to the end of that extension and some other mounts which we'll just build this up so it's clear what we're doing here but it supports in place a slip ring so it means that all of the wiring that will pass from this X27 stepper through the hollow shaft here and right down to this point whilst all of that's rotating uh, this slip ring can allow some uh, stationary wires to be in place here that will come round to the PCBs. And there'll be a, a cable gland to secure them in place at the end here. And what we want to do now is turn our attention to the very front of the panel. So if I deselect all of these parts we've looked at here. And let's have a look at the very front fascia of this panel. So, the first thing's going to be there will be a piece of acrylic which will be spray painted and CNC machined as normal just to give these marker lines. And onto this one will be at the rear of it a little bracket. Now, all of this is to do with moving that miniature aircraft marker that we mentioned. So this little bracket here will suspend in place a very small linear servo, a micro 
linear servo, the kind of things that are used in uh, remote control aeroplanes or little model boats. So we can see that there, I've drawn that into Fusion 360, so I've got all the dimensions. We can see the actuator of it there. Again, we can see how that's going to be secured. And then what we want to do is attach to that this 3D printed part, which is a miniature aircraft marker. We can see that from the front. So that's looking pretty good. And that was pretty much the only real way I could see to get that to work effectively because the dimensions are so tight um, and it was to really source this very, very small part here. Now, a few of the other considerations for the front are we need to be thinking about the cage control knob and there really is not the space to have it mounted behind. Now, as it happens, the whole profile of the... Um, standby attitude indicator is raised so that can work in our favor in terms of this aspect of the design so what I've put together here is a uh, an enclosure which will be 3d printed and attached to the front and within that a rotary coder can be placed and there'll be a lid for that there's another raised part here for the front profile of the standby attitude indicator. So all of that when it's put together is all very much in keeping with how the actual panel looks. And what we can start to do now is take that bit we've just explored from the design and we can build up all the other parts that we looked at previously. Let's just do that now. Yeah, and what we can do for this part here is just show the spacers securing that in place. Probably the, the last thing to really look at is, and always to have the appreciation of for, for this particular panel, is the very tight dimensions we're working uh, to. So here I've put in place uh, something that represents the actual frame it's being mounted into. And if you just have a look there, you can see that this whole um, part here, this tape wheel, needs to rotate um, on both axes. And particularly the roll can be problematic. That one, it doesn't catch the sides here of the wooden frame. And two, it certainly doesn't catch these spaces. So it's a question of therefore having the biggest attitude cylinder we can, but at the same time it can rotate freely. We mentioned earlier the odd shape of some of the corners here and really that design is just to ensure that, and we'll have a look at the rear profile here, it just ensures that when this panel is installed into the front dash frame and we can see here the wooden frame and the contour of that as it comes round, it ensures that along the length of this panel the brackets as they stick out to the side they're not interfering um, with the front dash itself. So this is the final design. It's a blueprint we can now work to. And in the next video in this series, we'll take some time to look closely at the physical construction of this. Thanks for watching.